Hey YouTube family, it's Sarah, less of Sarah. This is my week 49 update out from VSG, your vertical sleeve gastrectomy weight loss surgery, which I had November 30th, 2012 in Mexicali, Mexico with Dr. Aceves. So in honor of, I guess, my friend TJ Brownfield, Fat Kings TJ, um, who made a naked quote unquote video last week, um, and in honor of my video yesterday, I suppose, on uh, body image and learning to love your body, I decided to do my update this week naked. Just how naked am I? I guess you'll have to use your imagination. What I can say is if this iPad happened to fall down right now, it would look a lot like a National Geographic article. Just saying. So anyway, hopefully my nudity isn't too distracting for you, but I thought I would, you know, put myself all the way out there. Why not? So let's see. Lots to talk about this week. Um, this is... I literally haven't done an update at all, a uh, weekly update in two weeks, and haven't done a weekly update with my weight in three weeks, so it's been like forever. Um, I went from never missing a weekly update to like missing, I don't know, three out of like four. So, what else? Um, let's do the numbers. My highest weight was 460 pounds, that was the end of September 2012. My surgery day weight was 420 pounds. Um, Last week, I came in at, sorry, not last week, three weeks ago, I came in at 241.1. Um, and this week, this morning, I weighed in at 236.3. So over that three-week period, that was a loss of 4.8 pounds. Yeah, 4.8. So almost a five-pound loss in three weeks, which is not fantastic, but at almost a year out, Pretty good, not too bad, um, especially because two of those weeks I was on vacation. Now, to be realistic with you guys, um, and I know that I actually forgot to say anything <laughs> in my video yesterday, I promised I would say what happened to my weight while I was on vacation and I forgot. Um, I did weigh myself the day that we left. Um, so I made my update video before we left on a Friday, we left on a Tuesday when I weighed myself that morning. I was um, 240.3. And when I weighed myself the day that we came back, which was this past Wednesday morning, I was 239.9. So really, I only lost 0.4 pounds while I was on vacation, um, which to me isn't really a loss. I pretty much would call 0.4 a maintain. It's not even half a pound. Um, so I'm going to look at it as I maintained while I was gone. Um, that was my goal, to be honest, was just maintaining. Um, so I reached my goal. Um, I also, um, you know, I, how did I lose the rest of that weight this week? I really think that honestly, I probably was retaining water, um, when I got home just from, you know, eating salty food and, uh, eating out a lot and, um, traveling and all of that. So maybe that weigh-in wasn't really indicative. I may have actually lost weight while, while on vacation. Um, as well, I always drop weight right before lady time and lady time is due any day now. So from, literally from yesterday to today, I, I dropped two pounds. So um, I may have actually lost weight while on vacation, but really my goal was just to maintain, which I feel like I did. There was a bunch of stuff I didn't talk about in my video yesterday that I wanted to mention because I made crappy notes. Um, so I just wanted to talk about a few things that also have to do with eating um, while I was on vacation. One thing that I can't believe I forgot to mention, which is actually really important, is that I went through a period of probably three or four days while I was on the cruise that were extremely rough with my sleeve. Um, you guys know I don't normally vomit. Um, I don't vomit at all. I haven't vomited since surgery. Um, so that's not an indicator for me of issues. <laughs> uh, but I went through a period where literally every single thing that I put in my mouth made me feel ill. Um, and I really feel like that was a combination of things. And so I thought I should put it out there kind of as a warning. Number one, I was dehydrated. I definitely wasn't getting in the proper amount of water um, on a daily basis. And I really think that started to make me um, have issues. And I think once your sleeve gets irritated, it stays that way. Of course, because I was on a cruise, I didn't have the option of a soft diet. That's just not something I could have done unless I wanted to eat really high fat yogurt every day. 
I just didn't really have, I didn't have enough protein shakes with me. I didn't have enough to do a soft diet or liquid diet to, you know, make my pouch feel better. So I just kind of had to try and push through it, but it was really rough. Um, and I really think that the dehydration was a big, big part of it. Um, so please guys be careful when you're traveling. It was really super unpleasant. Um, and the more dehydrated you get, the harder it is to get liquids in. And I learned that the hard way too. The one thing that I think actually turned things around, believe it or not, was coconut water. I had heard um, from a number of sources that coconut water is really good for hydrating. And we were in Aruba and we were at the uh, California Lighthouse and there was like a little tiny, not even a shack, like a mobile like truck selling um, fresh coconut juice. And literally it was like, in a coconut um, and I was uh, my son had fallen asleep on me so I was sitting on the bus and I just asked my husband to go out and, and get me a coconut uh, juice coconut water I should say and so he came back in literally with like a giant young coconut with a straw in it and um, but I really think that that helped to turn things around because after that I found a lot easier to get um, my water in but yeah I that was really rough and I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> um, the maintenance uh, thing, the one thing that I didn't say, and I think I might have said this in my video beforehand, but I was trying to maintain my weight. And I actually felt like the way I was eating was what I would consider maintenance eating. Um, the calorie range that I was eating, the amount that I was eating, um, the types of things that, that I was eating, like the way that I was eating. So, you know, if I wanted something, I just ate a really small amount. Um, to me that actually felt like maintenance eating and so I was hoping that the outcome would be that I maintained my weight and basically I did so that was kind of comforting to me because I, there was a moment when I had that freak out like oh my god there's been days I've eaten like 500 calories more than normal and am I gonna gain when I go home and if I do gain what does that mean long term like how am I ever gonna eat normally um you know two or three years out and not gain if I can't eat you know 1300 calories now um so it taught me a really valuable lesson about my body and, and all of that. And not that, you know, things could change and I may not be able to eat 1300 calories in maintenance, but uh, it was sort of comforting in a way um, that I was able to do what I wanted, what I set out to do and that it worked the way I hoped that it would work, which is that I basically maintained. Um, so yeah, that was a good thing. And, and again, it, it really made me feel sort of better about maintenance eating and that sort of thing. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was uh, Sarah Nerd in Oregon was talking about this and also Sarah Harrison talked about it. She talked to, uh, in her tip in Trick Tuesday about sort of eating around your sleeve um, and how when she was on her cruise she found that she could eat a lot more because the meals were spaced out and Sarah talked about uh, Chris Waffle and comparing sort of someone who's a couple of years out and how much they can eat to how much she can eat at a few months out. Um, and I definitely, I don't normally push myself. Um, I don't, I kind of under eat my sleeve a lot of the time. So um, I'll stick to three ounces of protein, even though maybe I could eat four. Generally, I'm going to stick to three. I just prepare three and that's what I eat. I don't go and eat more, even if I'm not 100% full. Um, but on this trip, I found that I was kind of eating to capacity a lot because it was different food or good food or because it was a social eating situation and I'm not paying as much attention. And... Uh, I realized I could eat a lot more than I thought that I could, um, and especially when the meal was spread out. So at dinner time, when it was multiple courses and dinner might be two hours long or an hour and a half, I could eat a lot more than I normally could. Um, perfect example was we went to a specialty restaurant on the ship, a specialty steakhouse, and I had, um, there was a little amuse-bouche that the chef sent out, which was like a tiny, like a tablespoon of salmon tartare. Okay, no big deal. I ate that. I ate half of a spinach and mushroom salad. I ordered um, a cocktail, a uh, shrimp cocktail, but it was four pretty big shrimp. It had to be, I would say, at least two and a half ounces of shrimp. And I ate those. Um, and then I ordered the surf and turf, which was a five ounce lobster tail and four ounces of filet mignon. And I ate, uh, I think half of the lobster and basically half of the filet mignon. Um, and then I had a tiny bit of fruit for dessert. That is a lot, but it was also over like two hours. So there's no way I could eat all of that at one time. Um, 
but I was able to eat it because of the long time frame of dinner. So that's not something I would be trying to do all the time, but it is something that you can do. So it's something you, you kind of need to be cognizant of if you are in that situation for a long period of time. Um, but yeah, you definitely can eat around your sleeve. Totally possible. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention was that I did probably the second or third day of the cruise have a bit of a, a down moment. Um, I was almost, I wasn't really mourning food, but I think I was kind of mourning our old cruise experience because a lot of our old experience used to revolve around food and drinking, just being real. Um, a lot of it revolved around, you know, having a snack after going out, going to a comedy show or going to karaoke or um, having an afternoon snack or sleeping in and eating late and all this stuff. And there was a day when it, it kind of got to me. And even after almost a year, I was a little down about it. And But I realized I just needed to to start new habits and new traditions. And by the end of the cruise, it honestly didn't bother me at all. But, um, but I did have a hard time for a little while. So I thought I would share that too. So, I mean, obviously there's not much to talk about about the past few weeks that I haven't already talked about. So I won't rehash that. Um, I will talk about my October goal, which was to lose five pounds. I lost six pounds, I believe, or six and a bit. Um, so I reached my October goal. Uh, my November goal is actually to lose 10 pounds, which I think is maybe pushing it uh, for, you know, the few weeks before my surge anniversary. Um, but I'm going to do my best. I really would like to get to um, basically like under 330. Like I'd like, I'd love to be in the 320s. Um, my big pie in the sky goal was to have lost 200 pounds from surgery by my surge anniversary. Uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and whatever. I've thus far lost, I think, 224 or almost 224 pounds um, in just over a year. So I can't really complain. It just didn't happen to be the year after my surgery. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to get to 220, uh, or to 220, to 200, but I hopefully would like to get to 190 pounds lost uh, by the end of the month. So we'll see how that goes. Um, right now I'm doing good because I'm at about four, 3.8 pounds lost for November. So we'll see how it goes. Um, just see what else. There was something else I want to talk about. Oh, I've... I've been struggling a bit trying to get back into my normal eating after two weeks of eating way more than I normally would. It's been a bit of a struggle. I was also because I never had PMS before, but now I guess because of the hormone, I don't know. I have terrible PMS in like every way possible in my mood, in the way I feel, um, in, in my eating, I have bad cravings and I also have the urge to eat like every 30 seconds. Um, there's usually three or four days right before where I just want to eat all of the things um, and it's, it does, like, I'm just not satisfied at all. Um, but at the same time, I always drop weight right before as well during that time. So it's the weirdest thing is I want to eat everything, but I'm dropping weight like crazy. Don't understand it, but okay. Um, so it, that made it extra difficult, um, because I was trying to eat less, but then at the same time I was wanting to eat more. So, this week hasn't quite gone so far as I wanted it to, but I'm trying to be as good as I can, um, at least until ant flow arrives and, and things go back to normal. But I really do want to eat a bit more cleanly and kind of detox a bit from that trip. So that's going to be my goal for this week. Um, fitness wise, I talked about the fact that I uh, didn't do a lot while I was gone. And then I got a phone, came back to a phone call that um, I am no longer going to be working with my trainer and that I have a new trainer. I don't know why. I don't know if my trainer left. I have no idea. I haven't talked to them. Um, I do know the trainer that they've transferred me to. I've, I've seen her working with clients before while I've been working with my trainer. She seems very nice. I'm sure she'll be great. Uh, I just kind of feel a bit discombobulated because I don't know why that change happened, but whatever. I will keep you guys updated on how that goes. Um, last thing I just wanted to say, um, I will be making a plethora, a cornucopia of surgiversary videos on all kinds of various things. So you're going to see a lot of videos from me, but, um, for the next couple of weeks, I actually want to focus on making videos for those of you who are pre-op, 
Um, just kind of because during this time last year, that's why I was going through my pre-op thing. So if uh, you are a pre-op and you have a question that you'd like me to answer or a topic you'd like me to talk about, just leave it in the comments below on this video or any other video um, over the next little while and I will try and make a video to uh, address those. So until then, remember, it's not just about what you've lost, it's about what you've gained. Have a great day.